When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. He cut off the heads of 131. Hey everybody, Jerry Williams, aka Greater Sapien here. Thanks for stopping by. Today we are looking at another claim from Dubai's 200 proofs Earth is not a spinning ball. We are now at 126. The sun's annual journey from tropic to tropic, solstice to solstice, is what determines the length and character of days, nights, and seasons. This is why equatorial regions experience the most year-round summer and heat, while higher latitudes north and especially south experience more distinct seasons with harsh winters. The heliocentric model claims seasons change based on the ball Earth's alleged axial tilt and elliptical orbit around the sun. Yet their flawed current model places us closest to the sun, 91.4 million miles, in January when it's actually winter, and farthest from the sun, 94.5 million miles, in July when it's actually summer throughout most of the Earth. All right. The first part of Dubai's claim is interesting because while I'm sure he considers it a claim in favor of a flat model, it is just a description of the apparent motion of the sun as Earth goes through its orbit, tilted as it is. Here's a video by the California Academy of Sciences explaining this in three minutes. This is another great example of how the flat Earth concept doesn't pass Occam's razor. Now, don't get me wrong, when I bring up Occam's razor, because I think far too many people bring it up incorrectly or try to act like it's a settled law of reality or something. No, I understand that it's a simple framework to determine where best to apply one's energy in pursuit of an answer. People like to state Occam's razor as the simplest explanation is usually the correct one, so they think flat earth is simpler so it wins. But they're not understanding what is meant by simple. More accurately, Occam's razor states that when Faced with multiple valid options, the explanation with the least number of unknown factors should be pursued. Dubay's claim has a sun moving above the earth, tropic to tropic, solstice to solstice. What keeps it above the earth? What propels it? What keeps it on its path? How far above is it? What's its actual size? How are the heat and light generated? Why is its light and heat limited to only certain areas of the earth at a time? Why doesn't it follow the rules of perspective if it's so close by? These are all questions either answered by the accepted model or unnecessary because of the sun's distance in this model. The accepted model has fewer unknown factors. It is a simpler explanation. His claim about summer is a simple case of northern hemisphere bias shown by Dubai here. There's no such thing as most of the Earth when it comes to seasons. The same amount of the Earth's experiencing uh, summer in January as in July. Dubai seems to have confused the areas where most people live with most of the actual planet. And while the southern hemisphere is in summer at the nearest point of the Earth's elliptical orbit, the difference is only about 3.5%. This means the southern hemisphere would get about 7% more concentrated heat energy from the sun, maybe? And while you would be right to think 7% is not insignificant, you have to remember the makeup of the southern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere is over 80% covered in water while the northern hemisphere is only about 60%. That influences the distribution of heat a great deal. I understand it's the globe denier's desire to have the world explained in simplistic terms, but the Earth's climate is a complex system. Many factors contribute to weather, seasons, and temperature. It cannot be reduced to sun is far versus sun is marginally closer. Try as you might. Sorry. That's my job! That's what I do! I don't lose! I win! I win! Is there no one on this planet to even challenge me? Maybe you came 
by to congratulate